You have to think globally. You can't, you don't look myopically into just the fact that um, you're having premenstrual symptoms. Uh, we look at what, which is generally a, proge a low progesterone. Um, we look at why is the progesterone low. Is the body not able to produce reproductive hormones because the adrenals are, are fatigued? And we see that in young mothers um, who are not sleeping very well because of babies waking them up through the night. Um, so it's a, everything is, is tied in and it's fascinating. And I, I enjoy every single individual that I speak with because even though it can be, you can have the same uh, challenge. I'm not going to call it a, a, a disease or an illness. We'll, we'll call it a challenge, if you will. But um, we don't always just look at the at the thyroid hormones uh, and just if there's a low thyroid, just supplement it. We also want to look at why, um, what feeds the thyroid, and and why is it low? Because you have people who are not clinically hypothyroid, that don't require medication, but they're still symptomatic. And they're frustrated because, um, because of the symptoms and the doctors say, there's nothing wrong with you. But it, m many people are sensitive to variations in the range. And so we look at what is feeding that endocrine function. We don't just look at the endo, we don't just look to um, uh, nourish the, the thyroid gland, which we do, but we also look at what is causing this metabolic disruption. As we know, the thyroid regulates heart rate, metabolism, body temperature, and so um, uh, we have other symptoms that, that are problematic for people. Yeah. Bowel changes and um, you know, sleep issues and low moods or or irritable moods you know there there's there are many symptoms that people suffer and unfortunately if if the blood work comes out in the normal range and the range is is really big um it's it's a very wide range and people can be sensitive to variations yeah and uh, you throw in something like a Lyme disease uh picture and um it it compounds any imbalances that might already exist. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit of detective work. In fact, it's a lot of bit of detective work. <laughs> yeah. And it's all in the details, in the subtleties, um, which I find it fascinating. And I enjoy getting to the subtle things that oftentimes people forget until we have a couple of follow-ups and then they'll remember something that might have happened many years prior uh, or, or a, a strange collection of symptoms that seemed to come and go, but they didn't think anything about it. Um, there's many, many issues that factor in. And emotional, emotional events, traumatic events factor in also. And um, we, we often find um, hormonal changes following uh, whether it was the being sick, having the having a virus, or um, surgery, or a family member having problems, um, the loss of of a family member, um, these heavy duty travel changes at work, a lot of these things that um, people discount, but we can tie it in because the body works on cycles. Men and women all work on monthly cycle. And, um, and uh, it's, it's something that we, what we do today often does not reflect in our, in our body's functioning for about three to four cycles or three to four months. So I'm often having people reflect back and I would say, okay, when did you start your, your symptoms? And I would say, what happened three to four months prior to that? Mm. And most of the time, people will report something very stressful 
that may have um, triggered their issues today. So right. um, I wish that that herbal medicine was was the quick fix. I wish it was the the magic bullet. But just like um, the plants that you eat in your lunch and dinner, herbs are the same thing. Herbs are plants. So it's just like your broccoli. You're just taking many heads of broccoli yeah. and you're, you're um, taking a, a whole extract or you're just taking that plant material and you're um, able to extract everything out of it but you're taking a lot more than just what you can eat in your lunch, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, and so they, they are at therapeutic levels. Um, but the, I, I often hear of people who are um, a little fearful of, of herbs. And I would say if you're taking something that is standardized and manipulated into a nutraceutical, is very different than purely herbal medicine with a whole plant extract. Right. And um, we fall into problems when we say, well, the active constituent is A, B, or C, and then we isolate it and we maximize it. Now it's not herbal medicine. Now it is a nutraceutical and it becomes more like a pharmaceutical. Mm. And so we see issues like the baseball player who took um, ephedra, but it wasn't ephedra, the, the plant extract. He took the alkaloid ephedrine mm -hmm. in a supplement with probably um, caffeine and, uh, and um, sometimes they put aspirin compounds into it. And he had an issue with, with a heart attack. Um, because you lose the plant's inherent values and properties to uh, mitigate its functions. So what we use ephedra as a whole plant, not ephedrine for weight loss, but we use ephedra as a, as a whole plant, um, we use that as an effective bronchodilator. So for huh. people with asthma or COPD or respiratory issues or a or a respiratory infection, it helps to dilate the the um, upper respiratory airways. Wow. But it does have the effect of raising heart rate and blood pressure. So we use it judiciously and you use it with a lot of knowledge, not just th like throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what noodles stick. Right. Um, <laughs> you really have to be methodical mm -hmm. and understand the properties of the plant understand how it's metabolized in the body and if somebody is on certain medications how that medication is metabolized in the body okay. so that you understand how they interact and and whether it is a safe combination or not so right. a lot of people think well if it's natural a little bit is good a lot of it is better and yeah. that's not the way it works sometimes drop doses are all you need but Again, it's, it varies on individual and condition and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I think that answered your question. Yes. I'm sure I went off on a tangent no, somewhere. No, I mean, it's very <laughs> helpful because I feel the same way when it comes to looking at the emotional body and dealing with psychotherapy and counseling and coaching. This is something that is highly subjective, highly individualized, and comes in layers. And sorry, my cat, it, there he goes. Oh, he, he's going to pump in. It, this is Pumpkin. Hi. He pops into the picture occasionally. Yep. Hi, Pumpkin. He, he might come back. <laughs> so, but we, we work in layers that, that, Underneath anger is pain. Underneath pain might be fear. And underneath the fears, there's, there's an event. And then underneath that event, there's just always more underneath. The feelings, they're, they're the gift that keeps on giving. And sometimes it's painful and sometimes it's beautiful. But it's always there to indicate to us what is and is not serving us. So the goal is how do we develop the awareness and the, the consciousness to expand our perspective enough so we can see this big picture of complexities. And it works hand in hand because, uh, and I'll use um, a patient recently, and we're working with some reproductive hormone um, concerns and symptoms, but 
there there seemed to be a little bit of a of a roadblock uh, with a sense of fatigue, with a sense of, of low energy, a lack of motivation. And we actually uncovered um, uh, some feelings of stagnation in her, in her job and, um, and perhaps some uh, issues in her home with relationships. And what I had to explain to her because she, while she felt a little better, but she wasn't certain if she was feeling better and still the energy and the lack of motivation. And we realized the, the mental, emotional body was feeding her, her fatigue. Um, so I don't want to call it a, it was not necessarily a clinical depression, but she certainly felt stagnant. And so she, whether, the, whether the stress is real or imagined, whether it is the fire alarm that goes off or whether it's a stress response inside because of your emotional body mm -hmm. uh, and the things that you're coaching with, um, you're still mounting that stress response. You're still calling to the adrenals mm -hmm. to respond to a stressor. So whether it's a stressor that comes from your mind or your heart, or it's a stressor that comes from from uh, perimenopause changes. Um, they work hand in hand, right. and so I can do my job and provide her with what she needs to balance herself out hormonally. However, if she still is suffering stress from her frustrations or or her or um, feelings of of despair or or um, heartbreak, mm -hmm. whatever issues that you deal with, um, she will perpetuate this hormonal imbalance. Right. So it will, it, it might not be the total picture, but it certainly factors in. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really this heavy sense of grief that I see that I, I know that I've been through myself. And when you go through a chronic illness or an acute illness or an injury or any kind of life event that throws things off track and out of balance, mm -hmm. it's very, it derails us and off of our expectations of what we think it's going to be or what it should be. And so we're almost grieving. We're grieving the loss of our own expectations of what things should look like for us. That's a very powerful statement. Very, I, I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> I mean, and I feel yeah. like all of us are walking around in this constant state of grief almost because it's, it's painful to process all the loss that we experience every day, whether it's missing the train on the subway, missing that train, or it's breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend or you know anything that, that, that's emotional can have that profound effect of grief. And we don't always recognize it if we're not totally attuned with our bodies and, and what's really going on inside. So it's very helpful to have a good team around you. That's why I'm so grateful that you are sharing this with us because I know I certainly can't do it alone and that it's so important for, for chronic illness patients, for everyone to really understand that globally and connecting with the right people that resonate with you that feel healing to you is just going to transform your life and you know that pain you speak about is it tremendously draining on mm -hmm. your body's resources a lot of this fatigue um, can come from uh, accepting a challenge that you're dealing with, such as a Lyme infection. So it's it's that sense of frustration, the emotional component. Um, but be having discomfort is is um, a drain on the system. Um, having discomfort and pain um, can elevate your blood pressure. It it um, it disrupts the the endocrine function because of the constant bombardment with pain mm -hmm. so whether it's a mental or emotional whether it's from the mind or the heart or whether it is an actual physiological source imbalance you can't you can't separate the brain and the body nope. and so um, while I can ask some questions I have to defer to professionals like yourself who will 
ask the right questions further and and really explore that. I, I do my best to to treat the whole person and and to listen to what's going on emotionally. Um, and uh, but like you said, we can't do it alone. And sometimes it it really does take a a focused practitioner to peel all those layers uh, and then a full healing can happen full resolution can happen because like I said I can provide everything the body needs to balance itself but if that patient is still frustrated with a sense of being stagnant in in the situation the that element or that stressor will continue to pull those funds out of the bank. Remember, we talked about the yeah. adrenal funds that will continue to make small withdrawals from the bank. Yeah. And so if you don't replenish the body, it it will present symptoms right. as a result. That's why uh, I have a friend, Dara DuVernay, she talks about these issues being health opportunities because it becomes an opportunity for us to really examine what's not working for us and how do I want to use my energy? Do I really want to use my energy fighting everything about my reality and doing all the things to try and keep up with everyone else when my body is not allowing that? Or do I just allow and sink into wherever I am in this moment and try and support myself as best as I can with compassion and love and what feels good to me. And Sometimes the body stops you. What, ready or not, um, your body will tell you that the direction that you're on, the path you're on is not ideal for your greatest purpose. And um, whether it's a simple head cold because of running around and improper eating and things like that, mm -hmm. or something more serious, um, like we talked about, um, Dr. LaPraz calls it a general adaptation syndrome. And I think I, I might have gone off on a tangent with that um, because like we talked about things like menopause and puberty, we don't go back, but, um, but when you're under constant stress, whether it's mind and heart or it's an actual uh, physiological um, source disruption uh, like perimenopause you start to have effects of that and that doesn't relate with with um, emotional or situational issues um, but the body will adapt it's just that it will get through it will continue to function but not optimally so resetting the clock, regrouping, um, having talk therapy, going, exploring um, what you explore with the patient is, and I should say the individual, because we're not numbers, we're not right. just patients, we, we're people. Right. And, um, and I, I put together a, a little um, a photo with some writing on it on, on Facebook and and I said, it, it's, it's beyond a chart. It, you're not just a medical history. Mm. It, it's your journey. Thank you. You're not just um, numbers on a page from blood work or, um, or an MRI. Um, it's your journey. Right. And um, a lot of these things are wake-up calls. Some of them just happen. We, we, we have an environment that's, that is quite demanding um, with what's in the food, what's in the water. So there are things that we're navigating and our bodies are adapting to regularly. Mm -hmm. So um, there are things that we are accountable for and there are things that we can't control and, and it's a journey. So um, someone could have the same, two people can have the same condition, but the, the way they got there is very different oh, from one yeah. another. That's very, very true. And I love that. Uh, that's how I, I feel about that we are not our diagnoses. And I have my own beliefs about the pleasure and pain that come with the diagnoses, especially with Lyme, because so many of us go for so long not knowing really what's going on. And it's like, we want that answer to provide that emotional relief, which initially there is some, but then 
it's not quite what we think and we can get attached to it and then before you know it we're we're fighting something now and waging a war in our body when that's the opposite energy we want to bring to healing so it it is a blessing and a curse to find out what's going on which is why the holistic approach makes the most sense to me because it's so many mechanisms that got you here that there was dysfunction underneath all of these layers there was one little seed and then that made other things go and then other things and other things and by the time my thyroid started showing symptoms of course I looked normal because I was within range but nobody had caught the Lyme disease yet and so it was like Oh, we'll just give you this low dose and then wait. And then every it's one thing after the other started failing. These hormones are out of balance and then I can't I break my hip and it doesn't recover. And wow. yeah, th this it, it's or it's really I had a surgery on my hip and I dislocated it after the surgery and that is really what brought the Lyme disease really fully out and where I tested positive. Right after that, I found out that's what was going on for me. I was having heart problems that I never had before and just things were not right. Because your immune system is remarkable. I mean, you really need to thank your body for how resilient you have been as opposed to cursing uh, the process. But the, the fact that your body kept it contained until the hip uh, issue is testament to how robust your system really is right. and um, and uh, had you not had the challenge of, of the issue with your hip you might have gone indefinitely with a low level infection picture and well, I mean, it was getting to the chronic where I had other chronic issues that I'm like, right. oh, it's that condition. No, it's that disease. It's that disease and all the symptoms of MS. And then a doctor's telling me it could be a tumor on my, my uh, pituitary gland and then a tumor on my pancreas. And it was all these possibilities. But what was really going on was just this really overburdened body <laughs> at the root how, of it. And how frightening. How yeah. frightening. It, it, you compound it with the fear of mm. of the unknown and and the process of testing and the 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 whole lack of understanding what was going on compounds the physiological that's a great example yeah that the the fears and the anguish and the discomfort and the pain um was compounding what was going on physiologically with the infection and the, the hormonal imbalances that resulted. Right. So the fact that you're still here with us mm -hmm. <laughs> after all of that is a test of, yay, is a testament to how strong your body really was.